Hey, Tariq. Hello. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just gonna, we're just going to start by uh, chatting back and forth, and then hopefully uh, to the floor, and it'll be fantastic uh, to take uh, a few questions. So, Tariq, you've, you, you've done it a number of times. You've started uh, a number of tech startups. I'm just wondering, what's it like from your point of view? Oh, uh, first of all, I wanted to say how happy I'm back in Dublin. It's the second time, thanks to you. And it looks to be nicer every time, so looking forward to come uh, later in October. So how is, how is it like? You know, it's, it, it's very funny because we all, uh, um, I was, we, we talked about it, but we all have like dreams when we're kids. And sometime, uh, you don't know when, but at some point in your life, you just give up with, with, with these dreams and you just go and do a daily job or um, something that you don't really care about. And, and for me, uh, I was super impressed when I was a kid uh, by computers. Um, I was going to do history, I was going to do music, but one day I remember I went to this uh, conference. We were just at, uh, I was like five or something, that was six. And there was this machine, it was actually a computer, and you could type in words, and then you would press enter and you would have this robot voice saying what you typed. And it was quite stunning. And of course, the first thing I did when the teacher went uh, on the, you know, going to the other uh, part of the exhibition was to go and type my name and press the button. And she came back and she took my ear and said, you're going to break this machine. That was in the 70s. That was really the beginning. And so I got fascinated by computers and I saw, um, of course, uh, Apple and Microsoft. But I was fascinated by Apple and the idea that two people in a garage could actually build a computer and then build a revolution, a revolution. So um, I think that once in your life, you have to, I don't know if, I think, uh, who is an entrepreneur, who is actually in the work, work in the startup, or is, uh, who is who is funding a startup, who wants to work in a startup, I guess a lot of people. Just raise your hands if yes. you're involved in a startup or want to be. So I think I've been trying to figure out why should we work in a startup as a founder or as, as, a, as a person working in a startup? And I think the answer is, is very simple. Sometime in your life, you're working in an organization that is big and you can't really see your personal value, your personal add to a project. You're basically part of a project. And if the project is successful, it's, it may be because of you, maybe not. And sometimes, I think it's very interesting to know what you're really worth, knowing what you can do with a small team where everybody's voice counts, every work you do, everything you do or you don't do will be accountable. And I think that when you work in a startup, this is exactly what happens. And it feels great to know what you're really worth. So when I started my first, I started about five or six companies, but the, the one that got very, uh, more like, hobbies, you know, I'm starting a blog or I'm starting a, uh, so I'm, I built a company about it. But one day I, I started this company called NetVibe and I was actually, I had no office. I was in a, I was in a cafe, a Wi-Fi cafe in Paris. And I started to, I, I, I ran mul multiple blogs and I needed a tool to organize my life because the blogs were exploding and I couldn't really follow what's going on. So I basically uh, started building this tool and I decided maybe I should find a name for this. And I said, well, I had this domain name for a long time called NetVibe and I started doing this. And the day after, I got an email from some guy called Michael Arrington. He was actually work, working for TechCrunch. And he said, hey, I'm in San Francisco. This is really cool. Uh, can, I, can I talk to you? I'm going to organize a barbecue. And there's a few people. They were actually all the VCs of the Valley uh, coming, attending his. Uh, but I didn't know who they were. And I didn't know who he, who he was. And he said, well, don't worry. I will, I will show your product. And you will, we will be on Skype. And you talk about it. And I was still in a coffee. I had no office, no, nothing. And then suddenly, uh, I went to see the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the stats of the product for the first day. I had absolutely done nothing, just put the website and the domain name. And we had uh, 15,000 users. And I was quite uh, amazed because I had a small server. And then I received an email from Mark Andreessen, founder of Netscape. I said, hmm, I'm officially impressed, Mark. That was the, the email. <laughs> then we got, started receiving emails from a bunch of people. The, 
the CEO of Fox, the people from the Valley all around the world, and people kept being fascinated by that product. And for me, the, the moment that I, there was two options. The first was, oh, it's cool. And then you just shut down your computer and you go back to, to, uh, to your life. And then I said, well, maybe I should buy a bigger server. So I went, then I started doing this. And then, oh, maybe I should start thinking about the branding. And I started to do, I, I didn't think about it. It just came out like all these little, different tasks that you need to do to operate a product. And then you start answering emails, then people complain, then you answer and you fix the problem. And then you get caught up in a huge thing and then we started being this, uh, we, we raised, uh, we, I mean it went so fast, we raised probably too much, but 12 million euros. We had Index and Excel, who were the, the investor in Skype and in and Facebook. And then we were huge in the valley, big in Europe as well. We grew the company very fast. And then I discovered that I could actually build a company. Then, of course, like every company, I, uh, we, we went through, uh, it was so big, and I decided at some point that I was not, the direction the company was going was not the, 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 the vision I had initially. And I decided to uh, step down as the CEO, my number two took over. And the interesting thing is that right after, I, I had a great time, I had amazing media coverage. I was in the New York Times, The Economist, like everything you would dream of happened at, uh, for that thing. But I was unsatisfied and the first thing that I had leaving NetVibe was, was it only luck or was it uh, uh, something that destiny, you need to do these kind of things? Because uh, that was, that's much fun. You don't sleep, you work like hell, uh, you have amazing challenge to solve. But it's really much fun. That's the, the crazy thing about it. Usually when you talk about what you have to do on a startup, you just say, oh, well, it's not for me. But when you do it, it's just unbelievable. Simp it's, it just happened, and, and you're happy to do it. So doing Jolie Cloud, is the, my second company was uh, first to prove to myself something that I, I am made to do, or is it just you know, something I, I, just, I, I got lucky. And um, the truth is, you discover, and I think the only way to know if you're an entrepreneur is actually to, to try, but suddenly you care about product, you care about your brand, you care about hiring the right people, you care about building a team, because then you had to con I had to convince people, do you want to come? Uh, I, I, don't have any, I, I don't have any money to pay you for, for, for now, but I'm gonna hire like a small place and we will have a little garage and we will start working on this. So it's, it's, it's interesting because it's something that you, uh, you discover you can do. Could, could you just maybe explain uh, what Jolly Cloud is and what you're working on right now? Sure. So when I did NetVibe, the idea was basically, it was the, the beginning of the blogs and, and later Twitter and Facebook, there was an explosion of news and my idea was how to organize news in a way that, there's two ways to deal with news. You, can, you cannot read everything. So what we did is a small start page when you can add the news you care about and every day you would go and, and read the same thing. So it would help you focus in a world where everything explodes. So with um, Jolie Cloud, it was a different, uh, different thing. I felt that first, all the data we have today lives in the cloud. I've been using Gmail now since 2003, so I have pretty much all my emails, all my photos. Then I had Facebook, then we had uh, Twitter, Flickr, all of it. So the life we have is in the cloud. So it's not in the computer anymore. So why not having an OS, a, a system for computers that actually is designed for the cloud and not designed for running uh, locally uh, on, on the machine? So that's how we started. So I, there's, there's, there's always an interesting kind of um, line of discussion uh, at many a kind of meetup in Dublin and probably all across Europe, which is that you know, if you really want to start a startup, the best place in the world and the place you have to go uh, is to the Valley. And what I find quite interesting, Tariq, is you started in Paris, then you went to the Valley, uh, and now you're starting another company, but you're not doing it from the Valley, having built up all that network, all those connections and kudos. Instead, you're doing it from Paris. So wh what's your take on this view that the Valley is the place to do it? Can we start startups from anywhere? Yeah, of course you can start, a, a start, a, you can start anywhere. Then the problem is scaling, but that's another problem. We can discuss that later. I think you should start a company where you can hire engineers. I mean, if you're able to, to hire engineers in the valley and not having company like Zynga, who are very good at snipping all the, the best people, or if you're able to build a company and get 10 super good engineers, 
in San Francisco, just go for it. Personally, I think that people are better at that, and I think I'm better at, at finding the right people in France or in Europe. So this is the reason why we started in France. I think it's, you should start a company where you can hire people. And if you believe that you can hire, and it's hard to find good people. It's extremely hard because you have people that have the knowledge, they don't, they don't share the same values. You have people that have the values, they don't have the knowledge. So you have to find, it's always a guess, but I think it's, you should start where uh, you can find people. I think in Europe we have everything. We have uh, talents, we have uh, good connectivity, we have a, an interesting market. It's harder to start in Europe because, of course, we don't speak the same language. But you know when we, we did NetVibe and we did the same for Jolie Cloud, you could just put online, uh, we did a database uh, of all the words that are used on our application and people can crowdsource the translation. So you can actually translate uh, your, your, your product very fast. If you're doing an e-commerce site, it's difficult because it's more like you have to be on every country. But if you do a software-based company, you should go global and then translate very easily. I don't think it's the biggest problem. The biggest problem today in Europe is then when you have a critical size. And I experienced that with NetVibe. We were like very big, we were going very well, but we, we end up being 50 and then what's next? Do we go for the big thing or do we stay a medium, small size company? 